Welcome into Drew's Daily Diamond for Wednesday, October 16th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. 24 and 11. That's 69% winning streak on the show, guys. It's been nice. Plus 11.62 units of profit since what last Friday. So we're going back, uh, hey, almost uh, two weeks here. It's been a nice run. And no, we're not giving out minus 140, minus 150, and claiming 60%. It is up double digit units, 24 and 11. College football, Major League Baseball playoffs coming your way as we got Western Kentucky, Sam Houston State, 7 p.m. ESPN2 nationally televised Conference USA matchup, 55 and a half being the total minus two in the hook. That is the Bearcats of Sam Houston State as the home favorite. Western Kentucky won this matchup last season. It was at home in Bowling Green, Kentucky. They won 28 to 23. Do note they overcame five turnovers in that win. That's usually a good sign. This is a Western Kentucky team that beat Toledo. They were up two touchdowns in the fourth quarter at Boston College. They did end up losing that game, but still it gives you kind of an idea of talent. Um, where, where they're kind of ranking here, you know, up two scores against an ACC squad on the road. They've they've covered five straight games, playing some good football here. Head coach Helton, he's coaching them up. Their quarterback Velkamp, you know, he's a six five guy that behind center, he'll throw the ball downfield. He's got sixteen to six touchdown to inter, interception ratio for his career. A couple of those coming last year, but mostly this season as the starter. Western Kentucky is a team I'm looking to be betting on. Now, schedule spot wise, you know, it's kind of a, a, they're on the road here. And Sam Houston State does have extra preparation time. So that's something po pointing towards the Bearcats. But asking them to lay points here with a defense that is not ranking good statistically. And particularly when you put them up against the quality of opponent that they faced. Like, look at their schedule. They got blown out by UCF, which I'm not going to downgrade them too much for that. But they beat a Texas State team by one point on a neutral field. In that game, they gave up 325 yards passing. So something to watch there because they're going up against the Western Kentucky team that can really throw it. And other than that, those two games, look at their opponents. UTEP, UTEP hasn't won a game this season. Rice, Rice has, has all kinds of issues. Hawaii, if you've seen the the Rainbow Warriors play, they haven't been very good. And New Mexico State, which, you know, they had the talent drain over to Vanderbilt this year. They lost their quarterback. New Mexico State hasn't been any good this year. Those teams combined to go 5-19 and 19 record on the season. And a lot of what Sam Houston State is doing, particularly defensive rankings, is kind of holding those terrible offenses at bay. So I actually think this is a matchup that might come back to haunt them here. We've seen the Conference USA so far. It's kind of the, the top of the conference, and then the bottom of the conference is not very good. So if you're playing a lot of those bottom teams in the early going, your record can look sexy, even though, hey, maybe you're not that quality of opponent, you know, a qu that good of quality of team in college football. I think that actually might be the case here with Sam Houston State. Bearcats fans out there might not like hearing, hearing this, but – Let's be real. This is only their second year in FBS competition here, you know, at the Division One level. And last year they went three and nine record wise. So I think they're still having a tough time jumping off. I think that shows here Wednesday night, nationally televised game. You know, Western Kentucky is going to be ready to kind of show up and show out uh, with one of their biggest. You know, this is cool what Conference USA is doing midweek games. So I would look for a good performance here from Todd Helton's crew. And I think it's wrong team favorite, guys. I really do. I think the Hilltoppers is the way to get after this. Put the two and a half in our pocket. I like them on the money line as well if you want to get some extra plus price there. But for the first game up, we're going Western Kentucky plus two and a half against Sam Houston State. Next one up, 9 p.m. Eastern time on CBS Sports Network. It's FIU, Florida International on the road against UTEP, University of Texas, El Paso. So it's the Miners hosting the Golden Panthers, 48 being the total, FIU minus seven point road favorites. Which way do we want to go here with two and four FIU and 0 oh and six UTEP? All right, making the case for UTEP, it's you almost can't do it statistically. This team has been awful. 0-6, oh 1-5 and five against the spread. They're kind of playing two quarterbacks. I don't think it really matters which quarterback plays. They haven't done anything on offense. The only This is a team that's lost nine straight games going back to last season. If you're looking for positives to bet UTEP here, one, they're catching seven, and they're at home. The other being 
They won 27-14 last year on the road in West Miami. I was actually at that game, guys. I took the drive. from. I was living in Fort Lauderdale, took the drive by myself. I was one of like 80 people in the stands, probably the only one not related to a player or coach in that game. But UTEP was the, the, the better team, particularly in the trenches. Um I just I think a lot's changed. I really do. You know, Mike McIntyre, the head coach here for FIU, he's got a couple seasons under his belt there. And I really like his quarterback. If you watch last week's show, guys, FIU was on the road at Liberty. And we broke it down on the show. We we gave out plus 16 with the Panthers. And a lot of you guys in the comments were were like, clown face, what are you talking about? Betting FIU, Liberty's gonna blow them out. Well, they went to overtime. They did lose the game, but they took them to overtime and easy cash there with the plus 16 in our pocket, which, by the way, guys, if you want to comment below, feel free to chime in whatever you'd like. It actually helps out the algorithm. I'll be in there chiming away with you, even if you disagree. I'm all about it. But uh, I do remember some of those comments and it was the absolute right side. I mean, their quarterback, Keontae Johnson Jenkins. He was 40-0 in high school. He won three three state championships in, in the state of Florida at Miami Central. It, it, he got scholarship offers to the SEC conference, and he chose to go to FIU to play quarterback, and he's playing pretty good. You know, if you watch him back there, he's a good athlete. He can throw the ball down the field. He's got a good deep ball with that touch. That That's something I like to bet on. I mean, outside of the FAU game in the Shula Bowl, he threw three picks in that, didn't play very well. Other than that, he's been great. Second year as a starter, you know, the first year as a starter after that off season of getting playing time, he's kind of a bet on profile. And you combine that with FIU as the best pass defense in Conference USA, UTEP throws the ball a lot, surprisingly. I think they're going to struggle here. Um, It's just FIU laying seven as the road favorite. This is the first time since pre-pandemic that FIU has been a road favorite. Think about that. We were putting on masks and things like that. It's been before that since since FIU has has been laying points on the road. So they're going to have to win by more than a touchdown. That's the reason it's not going to be a best bet. But I, I do think FIU wins, wins by more than a touchdown, guys. So, uh, hey, I, th- I just think top to bottom roster talent-wise, FIU has the better athlete. So it's FIU minus seven over UTEP. Got one game left. We are heading to the Diamond for the National League Championship Series game. It's the Dodgers and the Mets. A reminder, comment below. All is welcome. What you're looking to pick, where you agree, where you disagree. Check out Premium Picks. Wagertalk.com got that all-inclusive. More than $500 off. Drew Martin, wagertalk.com. Get you through the rest of the year. Every sport, every pick. All right, guys, FS1, Fox Sports 1, Major League Baseball, National League Championship Series, 808 Eastern Time. It is the L.A. Dodgers and the New York Mets. Walker Buehler on the hill for the Dodgers. Luis Severino going for the Metropolitans. Pick and price tag, minus 105 on each side, seven in the hook being the total. Series tied up, one game apiece. Game two went to the New York Mets, seven to three. Game one. The Dodgers won nine to nothing. So it's been blowout, blowout. Hey, we'll see what happens here in game number three, a pivotal pivotal game as they go cross country here after the day off. Problem with the Dodgers is Walker Buehler, their starter, 5.38 ERA through the regular season. He's had one postseason start. He gave up six runs and seven hits to the San Diego Padres. I mean, let's be real. If, If they didn't have all the injuries on their starting rotation, he would not be pitching at least as the starter in the rotation in the playoffs. So it's a tough one to be on the Dodgers. I I don't doubt that their bullpen might get an early look here. The only problem is, you know, they were riding that, talking about the Dodgers pitching staff, 33 innings, straight scoreless innings, that, that streak that they had. But that that was thrown out the, the window. That was lit on fire when Francisco Lindor led off with the home run. So we'll see if the Mets can kind of carry that offensive explosion. Speaking of Lindor, he's got six hits, two home runs his last five games. The only problem with the Mets, it's a little bit tricky here, guys. Severino, their starter, he's given up nine earned, 25 hits in his last 17 innings overall. Now he's going up against that Dodgers lineup. Oh, man. I think it leads us to the over. I really do, guys. You look at the New York Mets, seven and two to the over in the playoffs. The Dodgers, six and one to the over in the playoffs. Eight games this year between these two squads, six and two to the over. Let's go up and over. Question marks on the pitching side. We get seven in the hook, a low total. Mets and Dodgers to end it, guys. Up and over, seven and a half. 
I'm Drew Martin, checking out for the Wednesday show. Come back and join us on Thursday. Until then, cash those tickets. Thanks for tuning in.